stands for our drive to connect, to have exchanges with other people. The element Mercury in habit says something about those exchanges. It tells your thinking and speaking style, the way you send messages and what they tend to be about. Mercury's logic loosens and thinking takes on a subjective quality in water. It's colored largely by personal experience, the divider between the conscious and unconscious minds is porous in this element. Now, by conscious mind, I mean the part of the mind of which you're aware and you know you're aware. The unconscious holds the information of which you're unaware. The brain is taking in millions of bits of information every single second. We don't need it all, so it goes into the vault of the unconscious mind. When Mercury is in water, the unconscious is active. Some of the things that are slated to be unconscious pop through the membrane. This phenomenon accounts for the intuition for which Mercury in Pisces is so famous. She knows you're lying because you said you didn't go anywhere, but your keys were on the end of the table this morning and now they're in the middle and you've got your hand to your chin the same way you did last time you lied. So her unconscious where all experience is stored puts the clues together and the truth comes to her awareness as a gut feeling. This intuition is central to Mercury and Pisces. It's the cord that connects the two fish and brings dualities together. The cord connects the conscious and unconscious, the light and dark, the inner and outer. You have two creatures who are headed in opposite directions, unaware of each other, connected by a cord. Does this look like it's going to work out? No, unless the two fish are really one and the two directions are really one. And that's what people learn about duality. Everything is everything else. Everyone is everyone else. This awareness is why Pisces is associated with spiritual life. Enlightenment consists of seeing the wholeness of things that appear to be scattered. That's the highest ideal of Pisces anyway. What happens when you dunk Mercury into the sea? Like I said in the Pisces personality profile, spoken language is useless underwater. And there tends to be an inarticulate quality about this placement. They tend to ask, you know what I mean? Or does that make sense quite a bit? They search for words and ways to say things. And just when it's going swimmingly and they're at a clip, they suddenly get snagged on a hook or they dart under the waves. But they're good at saying a lot through a touch, a catch in the voice, a hard to describe shift in energy, a pregnant silence. The Mercury and Pisces French writer Victor Hugo said, when you're talking to a woman, listen to what she's saying with her eyes. There's something inhibiting about language for them that doesn't quite convey the whole message. You see, this placement is non-rational. Like a dream, it has a rationality all its own. And this whole oceanic world bothers logical people. They don't understand the womb of existence Pisces is talking about and why they can't just say how they arrived at a conclusion. They don't understand why you keep losing things and why you didn't prepare for such an important meeting. Pisces can appear fragmented and disorganized, and that's because fragmentation and disorganization is necessary if they're going to bring to the zodiac what they alone bring Transcendence. Pisces is driven to transcend normal human experience 
to dissolve into something greater than the self. Therefore, it's associated with the three main areas where transcendence is usually accomplished. Spiritual experience, artistic experience, and the experience of drugs and alcohol. Whatever the personal path, transcendence is the focus. This placement usually has a lot of ideas about the spiritual world, the meaning of existence, the afterlife, metaphysical topics. I recently saw a client with this placement who had an out-of-body experience in which she saw her soul attached to her earthly body by a silver cord. The fish of the body attached to the fish of the soul. Or maybe this placement stays in body and through the use of opiates sails off into the clouds of heaven. The need to rise above itself seems to be there. And the most miraculous expression of that drive is art, poetry, dance, and music. Here is where Pisces really delivers. During the creative process, it takes the scraps, the bones, the bits and pieces, the elation and suffering, time and randomness, and brings them all together in a final product that speaks not only about the inner world of the artist herself, but up that chord comes a message that speaks to all humans. We're still moved by poetry written a thousand years ago. The sacred caves at Lascaux tell us what a pair of human eyes saw and what it meant to the person who rendered it 40,000 years ago. The messages from Pisces are timeless. It's the final and therefore most complicated sign of the zodiac. I've heard it called the cosmic dustpan containing a little piece of every other sign, and perhaps it does. Perhaps it's all the other signs pulled together in a transcendental synthesis. This placement tends to think about dreamy-eyed mystical questions. A lot of its work is accomplished in a trance state of one kind or another. They need fluctuations in consciousness, there's even a trippy quality to the way they perceive the ordinary world. This sign is so changeable, they can be found taking on the manners and accents of the people around them. And they tend to be good at blending in, being whoever they need to be, wherever they are. Water has no shape of its own, remember. Mercury in the 12th sign flows. Victor Hugo can be used again here as an example of the compassion and sensitivity of this placement. He contributed much to the literary romantic movement, but his works drip with so much heart energy, he actually changed the thinking of the people in France by focusing on the differentials in power that he saw around him. This placement tends to have a social conscience, while the opposing sign, Virgo, worries about individual health. Pisces thinks of the health of all society. He's also a good example of someone who thinks the ideal is possible. Somewhere within this placement, in their stream of consciousness, they hold on to the ideal of the Garden of Eden. And it boils down to them getting stoned on beauty. Experiencing something beautiful is a kind of rapture that takes them up the cord to a heavenly place. Hugo said, there is one spectacle grander than the sea, that is the sky. There is one spectacle grander than the sky, and that is the human soul. Love is a portion of the soul itself, and it is of the same nature as the celestial breathing of the atmosphere of paradise. 
Thank you for watching Secrets from an Astrologer's Desk, Mercury in Pisces. I'm Joy, Venus through the Zodiac to come.